today's presentation, we'll be showing how to modify a Samurai front axle assembly for extreme off-road use. We'll be welding on spring over axle pads, gussets, a truss, a differential guard, and lower shock mounts. Using a cloth, wipe any excess oil from the housing. Place the front axle housing in a bead blast machine. Remove any rust and paint from the outside of the housing. This could also be done with a wire wheel or sander. Place the front axle housing on a workbench. Remove the driver's side U-bolt pad by grinding the welds with a cutoff wheel. Take extra care so as not to cut into the housing itself. Once both welds have been cut almost through, break the pad loose from the housing using a hammer and cold chisel. Then work the pad back and forth, breaking it loose from the other side. Using a flap disc on an angle grinder, grind away any leftover welds, paint, or rust. Now remove the passenger side U-bolt pad using the same method shown on the driver's side. Be aware that this pad is made of thicker metal and may require more aggressive grinding. Unlike the passenger side, we found it necessary to grind both welds in order to get this pad loose. Grind away any remaining weld, rust, or paint in the same way as shown previously. This front axle would be used in a spring over application, so this customer has requested that spring over axle pads be used. These pads are sold in pairs and are side specific. Be sure you test fit both sides for proper fit before welding either side. Also be aware that the passenger side pad will only fit in one way. Check to see that there's minimal gap between the pad and the axle housing and that the pad is fit squarely into the existing spring pads. Once satisfied that both spring pads are positioned correctly, begin on the passenger side and tack weld the pad in two locations. In order to reduce excessive heat and potential axle housing warpage, we recommend that you not weld any more than an inch and a half to two inches in any one location. This means that you weld on one side of the spring pad and then weld on the opposite side. If time permits, it's a good idea to let things cool down between each weld. We'll begin on the passenger side spring pad. Run a 2 inch bead on the outboard bottom rear. Now make a similar weld on the inboard bottom front, exactly opposite the first weld. The third weld will be made on the rear inboard bottom. The fourth weld will be made on the outboard bottom front. Then the fifth bead will be the inboard top rear. The sixth bead will be made on the outboard top front. Then we'll place the seventh bead on the inboard top front. Next, we'll weld the outboard top rear. Then finally, weld the low range spring pad to the existing spring pad on the front and then the rear. 
Now that the passenger side pad is complete, position the driver side spring pad, but don't tack it yet. Using an angle finder, position the driver side pad as close as possible to the same angle as the passenger side. Once positioned correctly, tack weld the pad in place. Weld up the driver side spring pad in the same method as shown on the passenger side. Position the front axle assembly upside down on the workbench. The gussets are side specific, however they're not marked, so determine which gusset to use by test fitting. Once the best fit is determined, position the gusset so that it aligns with the kingpin hole and the existing spring pad hole. Once positioned correctly, tack weld the gusset at both ends. Once tacked, Weld the entire gusset using a crisscross stitch approach. To reduce excess heat and reduce the risk of warpage, we recommend welding no more than one to one and a half inches at a time. If possible, let the work cool between each weld to reduce the risk of warpage even more. This is what the gusset should look like once it's completely welded. First one side and then the other. Weld up the second gusset using the same approach as demonstrated on the first. This is what the second gusset looks like when it's completely welded. Turn the front axle assembly right side up and position the truss as shown. It should be centered on the differential housing and centered on the axle tube. Once positioned correctly, tack it on the differential end and then weld it on the spring pad end. Once the truss is tacked in the correct position, further tack weld it about every three inches. We like to use the welding tip as an estimated three inch gauge. Once the back side is tacked every three inches, Tack the front side as well. Then using the alternating stitch approach, weld the truss to the front axle assembly. To reduce the risk of warpage, we recommend not welding any more than two and a half to three inches at a time and allowing the work to cool between welds if possible. This is weld number three. Weld number four, number five, weld number six, number seven, number eight, weld number nine, Number 10, weld number 11, number 12, weld number 13, number 14, weld number 15, number 16, Weld number 17, number 18, weld number 19, then finally the two end wells, first one side and then the other. This is what the truss should look like when it's completely welded. Next, we'll weld on the differential guard. Position the front axle housing on the workbench as shown. If not done already, install the oil check plug. This will ensure that the well spatter doesn't damage the threads. Position the differential guard ensuring that the access aligns with the oil check plug and the diff guard fits properly on the housing. Once positioned correctly, tack weld both sides 
and then weld the bottom. Here again, we use the alternating stitch approach. Avoid welding more than two to two and a half inches at a time and allow the work to cool between welds if possible. This is weld two. This is weld three. Weld four. Weld five. And finally, weld six. This is what the diff guard should look like when it's completely welded. Some prefer to wait until the axle assembly is installed on the vehicle to weld on the shock mounts. However, for the purposes of this video, we will install them on the workbench. Begin by setting the axle assembly on the workbench oriented as if it were installed on the vehicle. Measure the angle of the spring pad with an angle finder. The shock mount can be welded either on the bottom of the axle or on the top. This customer asked that it be installed on the bottom. Position the shock mount so that the stud is at the same angle as the spring pad and tack weld it to hold it in place. Double check that the angles are close to the same. In this case, they're both at 0.9 degrees. If they're close, tack weld the shock mount in one or two more places. Then weld the shock mount down one side and then the other. Weld on the second shock mount following the same procedure shown on the first. Once all the welding has been completed, wipe down the entire front axle assembly, suspend it securely, and apply several coats of a good rust inhibiting paint. That concludes today's presentation. We hope these instructions have been helpful. Our next presentation will show how to clean, inspect, and prepare all parts ready for the front axle reassembly. If ever we can assist you with any of your off-road needs, simply log on to www.lowrangeoffroad.com or give us a call at 801-805-6644.